Hey guys, how much UVB is enough? How much is too much? What skinks need what? What brands are best? What types are best? Are there dangers and risks to UVB? How do you know you're providing the correct amount? Find out today in this video. You are watching Reptile Mountain TV. Evidence-based, captive bred, and animal focused. Reptile Mountain TV, a channel dedicated to evidence-based reptile keeping, where opinion is not fact. I'm TC Houston, a former professional AZA zookeeper and current skink breeder and reptile breeder dedicated to providing quality information to the global reptile community. If you're new here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit that bell so that you don't miss an upload. And if you've been here before and haven't subscribed, get with it, y'all. I want to start by saying that there are products on the market that, for UVB that are outstanding. And there are products on the market that can actually seriously harm your animals. And I'm not talking about those off-the-wall knockoff brands either. I'm talking about mainstream brands. So be sure to watch this whole video because your animal's health literally could depend on it. All right, so what is UVB and what is it not? Well, UV stands for ultraviolet, and it refers to the wavelengths of light that are just shorter than or just below violet on the spectrum which humans can see. There are three types of ultraviolet light, A, B, and C. Today, for our purposes, we're gonna talk about type B, which is the specific type that plays a crucial role in the natural production of vitamin D3 in reptiles. In, rea in really, really simplified terms, our skinks, blue tongues, pink tongues, social and crevice skinks, and many other reptiles depend on the UVB light produced by the sun to provide vitamin D3, which is a vector, catalyst, or mechanism, if you will, for calcium absorption. Thus, no D3 equals no calcium absorption, meaning weak bones, which leads to loads of other problems, but not limited to metabolic bone disease and even death. Therefore, the use of UVB in D3 synthesis is the most natural and primary method by which most omnivorous and herbivorous reptiles obtain most of their vitamin D3 and maintain strong bones and overall health. What UVB is not? It is not a magical bulb whereby your animal will be transformed into a healthy, active, interactive, breeding, thriving, Olympic gold medal winning creature. Simply because you turned on a special bulb, UVB will not make up for any lack of other husbandry deficiencies. A crappy diet? Still a crappy diet. Improper humidity is improper humidity, no matter what light you shed on the problem. Get it? Light shed on the problem? <laughs> Yeah, okay, whatever. Now, I'm not gonna discuss whether UVB is required for skinks. I will say that UVB is the primary and most natural method for ensuring that your animal has D3. It's also the most incorrectly used. However, there is a multitude of evidence to support that blue tongues can live, yes, even thrive, without ever being given UVB. I have a whole video on that here, so go please check that out and then come right on back. But let's get to addressing those questions we all have, like how much is enough? How much is too much? What type do I use? What brand is best? And so on. Okay, so there are three commonly available types of UVB bulbs in the industry. Yes, there are a few others, but I'm talking about the main three today. And that is the linear bulb, the compact fluorescent bulb, and the vapor bulbs, sometimes called mercury vapor bulbs. So each of these bulbs has specialized components allowing for the mercury in the bulb itself to be charged to a point of producing ultraviolet B waves. Each bulb has a specific designed purpose. The linear bulbs are designed to produce a steady, even amount of UV across a broad lighted range. The compact fluorescence can provide a localized area of UVB in a stronger narrow area that also often stimulate or simulates a sun patch coming through the trees. A mercury vapor bulb produces both strong UVB radiation and a more broad area than the compact fluorescence but not as broad as the linears. Mercury vapor bulbs also provide heat so that they can serve both as a basking heat source and a UVB source. Many of these bulbs on the market come self-ballasted and work with either a specified fixture or a standard ceramic light fixture. Within the linear bulbs, there are two main types, the T8 and the T5 high output. Now the T8 bulbs are wider in diameter and produce a less consistent and weaker UVB output than the more narrow T5 bulbs. Now T8 bulbs were the first on the market and they seem to be getting phased out by the newer, more powerful T5 bulbs. 
Now, as I shared in my Art of Reptile Keeping video, the answer to what bulb to use is dependent on tons of variables, including your animal's natural behavior, the environment, the enclosure, and your keeper's goals. For example, in natural behavior, my Gigi skinks, Egernia stokesii, and an eastern blue tongue skink, Taliqua skinkoides skinkoides, they have two very different types of behavior when it comes to sunbathing. So an Egernia stokesii would be found out throughout most of the day soaking up large amounts of UVB, where an eastern blue tongue skink would be found early in the morning, maybe in a sun patch where the sun has broken through the trees and has lit up the ground floor and they're basking there. So it varies considerably. So you want to put a high amount of UVB on a Gigi skink and a lower amount of UVB on a, on a blue tongue skink. And we're going to talk about how to measure that with a solometer here in a minute. An example of an enclosure variable would be my son's Horsfield's tortoise or Russian tortoise, Testudo horsfeldii. Now this cage has an open air tortoise tub, so there is no barrier between the bulb and the tortoise other than air. Whereas a Berber skink, my Berber skink has a quarter inch hardware cloth, a screen, in between the bulb and the animal's skin. Now it's important to understand that any barrier in between the bulb surface and the animal's skin can affect a actual, the amount of UVB that's produced, or at least not produced, but that penetrates to the animal's skin. So many products on the market today have like been manufactured to mitigate that so that screen doesn't diffuse or dilute it too much. However, it can filter out quite a bit of the UV. So it's important to take readings if you're gonna do with a solometer, which we're talking about. You need to check that underneath, underneath the screen, not just straight out of the enclosure and then think that it's the same once you put it in the enclosure. Another thing is cage furniture. Cage furniture can certainly uh, disrupt the wavelengths. If you put a lot of plant life above it and it's filtering through to where your animal basks, it's definitely going to affect the amount of UV. So you need to account for that. If you need more UV down low and your animal can't get up high but you have a really thick screen or something, you might need to put a powerful UV light on there to penetrate through to account for the screen. But it's always important to use a solometer in order to determine if you are actually doing that because if the, if the actual bulb is designed to penetrate the screen, then you might be power blasting your animal, which would not be very effective. So keeper's goals as far as how they design the enclosure matters, as well as the enclosure setup, all of that has to play a role in what type of bulb that you want or need to provide. So how does one know what to get then? Fantastic question. To answer that, let me show you this. This is a Solometer 6.5 and this is a Solometer 6.2R. These are UVB meters that can measure the output of UVB coming from bulbs and even the sun. Now using these, the 6.5 specifically, a team of herpetologists from Texas Christian University led by Dr. Gary Ferguson looked at the UV index uses and behaviors of several species of reptiles to develop what's called the Ferguson Index or Ferguson Zones. Now these are general guidelines for what UVB indexes are used by what species or what types of animals. So for blue tongue skinks, you know, my bread and butter, as you know, their research says that they fall between zone two and zone three, requiring approximately 1.1 to 3.0 UVB index for UV. So taking this solometer and first measuring where my animals bask and how far from the bulb, I can then take a reading that allows me to know if I'm on track with my blue tongue skinks using this. You might say, TC, that's not very helpful. How do I know what to get still? Well, first, consult your Ferguson zones. There will be links in the description to this and other research. Now, once you know where your animal falls on that scale, then consider your enclosure setup or desired setup and make an assessment from there. If your animal is a zone three or four, consider either a T5 high output output bulb that is a 10.0 or a 12%, depending on the brand, or a mercury vapor bulb. If they fall lower on the Ferguson index, look for a 5.0 or a 6% T5 or even a quality compact fluorescent. There isn't a wrong answer as long as what you buy puts out a UV index that is within the animal's zone and all other aspects of husbandry are met. This may have to mean you do trial and error. So what brands then do I get? Well, quality bulbs produce UV as stated on the packaging. And as far as I'm concerned, after multiple bulbs and multiple tests, I have confidence in only two brands. That is Zoomed and Arcadia. 
I have tested Zilla, I have tested Exoterra, Zoomed, and Arcadia. And in the past, I have used Exoterra. And I will say that I made a horrible mistake using Exoterra. In fact, if you are using any Exoterra compact fluorescent, aka a coil bulb, and haven't tested them individually with a solar meter, if you haven't, go turn them off right now. Seriously, pause the video and go turn them off immediately. Not too long ago, I got a new solar meter and I was playing around with it and I was experimenting with some things. And I hadn't tested all of my Exoterra bulbs, only a couple, and they were fine. And so I went on. I was more interested in testing my T5 high output stuff for the animals that had high requirements in the Ferguson zones. But then I tested one that wasn't on an animal because I was actually using it to see how much UV would be put off after a year. So I had it on an, an empty enclosure. And at 10 months, I got bored and decided I was going to test it early. And it read 15, 15 on the index. I was blown away. I had been under the impression that the mercury in the bulbs was supposed to degrade over time. And that as it did, the bulb would then put out less and less UV, hence why they needed to be replaced at six months. And some that they say can go 12 months. But I never imagined that they'd be going up in UVB output. So I went to the experts and they confirmed that poor quality bulbs can actually increase to dangerous levels rather than decrease to nothing. After learning this, I went and tested all my bulbs and they had all increased despite being less than six months old. Thankfully, all but one were still in almost safe levels. However, one was way too high. Thankfully, I believe I caught that before irreversible damage was done. And I no longer recommend Exoterra bulbs for any use on living creatures unless you're testing them monthly, even weekly, with the solometer. If you're not, you could literally be harming your animal without you ever knowing it. Here is what they say what um, this bulb produces on the packaging. And here is the reading for times higher than that, which is stated. And here is another, and another, and another. Yes, this is a consistent result from many new bulbs after running them for 100 hours, which is the burn-in time. Like I said, if you haven't personally tested them with a solar meter, turn them off now. So what do I use now? I use Arcadia and Zoomed's T5 high output linear bulbs for like my Gigi Skinks, Berber Skinks, and Tortoise. Now for the Gigi Skinks and the Berber Skinks, I'm using a Zoomed 10.0 linear. As well as for my um, tortoise, I'm using a 12% Arcadia linear bulb. For my son's tortoise, I'm using a mercury vapor bulb, as I've shared before, because he has a different setup than I do down here. Now, for my blue tongues, I have now switched to Zoomed's Reptisun 13 watt 5.0 compact bulbs, and it puts out a 1.5 to 2.5 UVI through the mesh in a square foot region, which is perfect for my animals. And I am measuring that weekly because I am taking no more chances. To recap everything, there are three main types of bulbs, guys. Compact, linear, and mercury vapor. You should always consult your Ferguson zones before purchasing and purchase accordingly. I recommend Zoomed and Arcadia alone. And if you are using UVB and don't have a solar meter, and I'm not being paid to say this, you really, really, really should. It is the only way to know that what you are buying isn't radiating your animals to death because you can't necessarily trust the box, as I've shown here today. One last thing. I know there's a bunch of y'all that are probably going to ask, well, if I have this, this, and this, can you tell me what bulb to use? No. This whole video, guys, was teaching you how to figure it out yourself. I encourage you to go to other sources if this one isn't enough, but I'm not going to tell you what bulb to use. Sorry. Well, guys, I hope that this video helped you out. Look right down there. There is another one of my videos. Check it out. Go watch it right now. Hey, thank you to my subscribers, my viewers, and most of all, my patrons. You are awesome. Remember, opinion is not fact.